Tomorrow is Superstar Tuesday, and I want to thank you all. I tell you what, I'm rushing ahead, aren't I? 150 million people have been killed since 2007 when Bernie voted to exempt the gun manufacturers from liability. It would put 720 million back, million women back in the workforce. Nobody should be in jail for a nonviolent crime. My name's Joe Biden. I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. What's not to like about Vermont in terms of the beauty of it? And what a neat town. Play the radio. Make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. We choose science over fiction. We choose truth over facts. Think about it. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the, go, you know the, you know the thing. You had people like Margaret Thatcher, oh, excuse me, you had p p people like the, the former chairman and leader of the party in, the, in Germany. Go to Joe 3033. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, in addition to that, we have to uh, make sure that we, uh, we are in a position that we are, well, let me, let me go to the second thing. I've spoken of it. Let me be clear. The fact of the matter is that since 2016, when Joe Biden was still president of the United States, Senate, vice president of the White... Look, here's the deal. This country wasn't built by CEOs or hedge, fr hedge fund... You, you know the thing. Here's the bottom line. Number one, if we don't understand that we're in a position to put ourselves uh, in a place where we can start to move... To, well, well, let me go on to the second thing. Here's the deal. Uh... John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, commie. Firstly, let me just say this right now for the record. There's nothing funny about making fun of old people. There's nothing cool about making fun of old people. You think that, oh, well, if I make fun of old people, then everyone's going to like me and I'll be... No, it's in poor taste. That being said, it is completely ethical to make fun of Joe Biden for working with the DNC against American interests to stop one of the greatest political revolutions in the history of the country while his brain is still running Windows 95. In other words, it's not only morally permissible to make fun of this man. We have a moral obligation to make fun of this man. To make fun of Joe Biden is to fulfill your patriotic duty. So I'll explain why I actually gave money to his campaign to get this epic Joe Biden t-shirt. We'll analyze exactly what's going on with him, what this means for the left, even better what it means for the far left and then the election in general. But firstly, Elephant in the room, there's a global pandemic, and I feel weird not talking about it, but since everyone's talking about it, I'll try to avoid it so that you guys can have some content that's not coronavirus related. But uh, that aside, a lot of you know Americans need help. It's all hands on deck, so I figured that we could do a little charity stream to raise some money. Some of you guys might remember when James Younger's father was fighting in court to protect James from his mother, who was trying to put him on cross-sex hormones to make him transition from a boy to a girl. This channel donated over $1,000 to the legal fund, and I don't know the exact amount. I just know that I donated 1000 and then tweeted uh, the link and told everyone else to donate, and then a lot of people did. And I don't know if it's because of us, but the father ended up being successful. So at the very least, we helped literally save a young boy's life. So that's pretty epic. But yeah, Friday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time, going to go live on the channel. It's going to be a relaxed stream. We're going to play some old video games, just hang out all together in quarantine. We can talk about whatever you guys want, just send in super chats with questions or comments, whatever, and then all that money is going to be donated to help the coronavirus efforts in the United States. And, you know, conservatives like to talk about how private charity is better than government's intervention, so it's time to walk the walk with that, and I'll post uh, the receipt of the donation on my Twitter so that you can see where the money's going, or you can email me and I'll send the receipt directly to you just in case you think that I'm gonna, gonna go Clinton Foundation with the donation, so yeah, very excited for that, but you know what else I'm excited about? I'm excited about this Joe Biden shirt, and I'll tell you exactly why. In 2016, and I know this because I was there, I was on the front lines, in 2016, it was enough to wear a Trump hat. That was enough to make the radically left journalists, students, professors, activists, whatever. That was enough to make them hate you. Now, fast forward four years, we've been through Russia collusion, Mueller, Ukraine, impeachment, women's marches, all of this nonsense. They never quit their whining. And so now I'm a tad irritated, right? I'm looking for a way to really rub salt into the wound to really let them know that they're going to lose again. So what do I do? I buy the epic Joe Biden t-shirt. Oh, well, John, John, why would you support Joe Biden? Trust me. It's all a calculated maneuver. Every decision, a chess move 
The Joe Biden t-shirt is both ironic and unironic at the same time, sort of a Schrodinger's cat. It's our way of letting them know that we know that they're making a huge mistake and we absolutely love it because our guy's going to win again and there's nothing that they can do about it. I mean, the people that rioted after Trump won in 2016 are now saying that they're going to riot again if Bernie doesn't get the DNC nomination. And I interact with these people pretty frequently and they know that I'm an outspoken Trump supporter. And it's fun for me because they're like, no, you idiots, don't nominate Biden. He's becoming senile. Trump's going to wipe the floor with him. And we're like, Joe, 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 bring it on. You know, like they know that their party is making a huge mistake. And we know that their party is making a huge mistake. The only difference is that we find it hilarious. And they actually believe that Bernie would have a better shot. And I don't necessarily think that Bernie would do better uh, than Biden just because he hasn't really gained traction with minorities, let alone the DNC, probably because he isn't explicitly linked with the establishment. But I can assure you with every fiber of my being that the Biden versus Trump debates are going to be some of the best television in the history of broadcasting. The reason for that is obviously Donald Trump is the king of reality television and the king of winning the crowd. But also Joe Biden isn't afraid to take shots back. But the problem with that is that he can barely function as a speaker, even when he has a teleprompter in front of him. So put him up against the high energy incumbent president of the United States, Sleepy Joe's not going to fare well at all. And the Democrats seem to be aware of that. Um, but let's talk about what's actually happening here with Joe Biden. I do want to establish a frame of reference because obviously we can watch the clips from the beginning and think like, wow, Joe Biden's really losing it. But lest we forget that Joe Biden has run for president twice before this. He has been in Washington since the days of Richard Nixon. And what we've learned from not only this election cycle, but much of his career is that Joe Biden is just not good at running for president. That uh, uh, Chuck Graham, state senator's here. Chuck, stand up, Chuck, let him see you. Oh, God love you, what am I talking about? I tell you what, you're making everybody else stand up, though, pal. Thank you very, very much. I tell you what, stand up for Chuck. My mother believed and my father believed that if I wanted to be president of the United States, I could be, I could be vice president. My mother and father believed. Look, John's last minute economic plan does nothing to tackle the number one job facing the middle class. And it happens to be, as Barack says, a three letter word, jobs. J-O-B-S. Jobs. Joe, you want to administer the oath? Am I doing this again? For the senior, senior staff. Senior staff. Yes. All right. A number Does of the cabinet members have already. <laughs> My memory is not as good as Justice Roberts. Chief Justice Roberts. <laughs> does, does anyone <laughs> have the... No, I... <laughs> and thank you, uh... Dr. Pepper, and thank you, Chancellor, or Dr. Paper, and thank you, Chancellor. A man who will be the next president of the United States, Barack America. But the Taoiseach knows a lot about it. His mom uh, lived in, uh, in Long Island for 10 years or so. Uh, God rest her soul. And uh, um, although she's, wait, your mom's still, your mom's still alive as your dad passed. God bless her soul. I gotta get this straight. Now is the time to heed the timeless advice from Teddy Roosevelt. Speak softly and carry a big stick. End of quote. I promise you, the president has a big stick. I promise. Yeah, I mean, that's textbook Joe Biden. So in 1988, he officially ran for president for the first time, but his campaign was derailed once word got out that he had plagiarized one of his speeches from the leader of the British Labor Party at the time. And then once word got out about that, people dug around a little bit and found out that he had a history of plagiarizing going back to when he was at Syracuse Law School in 1965, taking an introductory class on legal methodology, during which he basically did the 1965 equivalent of copying and pasting an article from the Fordham Law Review and submitting it for a paper. So from there, Creepy Joe presumably decided that he just had to wait a couple decades to let the public forget about all that. So that's what he did. Then comes 2008. He launches a campaign. Didn't really get any traction, but he ends up, of course, becoming Barack Obama's running mate. And this was done for a few reasons, such as that it was thought that since Biden had been in the Senate for such a long period of time, he would be useful in advancing the uh, agenda of the Obama administration. And also, and more interestingly, that Obama reportedly did not want to pick Hillary Clinton, who was in the lead for most of the 2008 primary until Obama passed her, because he thought that she would try to usurp power from him. And it's also been reported that Joe Biden explicitly told Obama that he would not have to worry about him maneuvering for a presidential run, whereas everyone in Washington, and especially within the Democratic Party, knows that Hillary Clinton will move to consolidate power by any means necessary. I think that's very funny, but 
Even during the 2008 campaign, Joe Biden could not help himself from saying things like, Barack Obama is the first mainstream African-American who is articulate and bright and clean and a nice looking guy. And he called that storybook or my personal favorite uh, when he said that Obama was coming to take everyone's shotguns and he warned him not to do that. And then he could not stop there. He had to go on to say, I've got two. If he tries to fool with my Beretta, he's going to have a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Double action. Joe, the quickest draw and the slowest mind in all of Delaware. Do you think that they gave him that when he voted in favor of invading? Iraq. Like when you send American boys to die in the sand, they let you pick between a souvenir pen and a souvenir surplus M9, right? But that's the thing. Joe Biden is somewhat similar to Trump in that neither of them really try to come off as like a, a, you know, a sophisticated elitist politician. Like Trump does it a lot better because he's sharper and he's actually worked and built businesses. But Joe Biden still has that smile, you know, that blue collar appeal. But the problem is when you take someone like Joe Biden, who's got that, you know, one of the guys, and then you don't give him any principles or convictions, and then you establish this cognitive graveyard that continues to expand its geography, what you're left with is an absolute political liability. And that's why he can't even land the endorsement of Barack Obama. In the timeline of Joe Biden's career, there would be no endorsement that would be more expected and more significant than the endorsement of Barack Obama. But he hasn't landed it yet, and he probably won't until much closer to the election, if at all, because he could quite possibly putter out beforehand. And this is very funny to me because so much of the Obama presidency revolved around celebrity worship. You know, you've got Barack Obama. He's a young, charming guy. And he says, oh my God, he's on Ellen and he's dancing. That's so cool. And Joe Biden's his best friend. They're besties. It's so cute. Friendship goals. And now that you're done being manipulated by the strategic PR of the Obama administration, perhaps you can realize that they're not actually besties. In fact, the reason Biden even exists in the Obama administration is because it was thought that he could help Obama consolidate power and then maintain that power without trying to subvert him. You were played for a fool. Hey, what's a good way to distract the public from an unprecedented series of power grabs? I don't know, maybe start dancing and joking around with the Key and Peele guys. That's why no one remembers the Obama scandals, by the way. No one talks about Fast and Furious. No one talks about the IRS targeting conservatives. Not only because the media was working with him and against his opposition, but because everyone was too distracted by how hip he was. But that's Obama. Gotta talk about Joe. So what's happening with Biden is extremely obvious to all of us. Something isn't quite right. I mean, you know, as we've talked about, it's never really been good with him, but it's getting considerably worse this time around. So firstly, you got to look at his medical history. Joe Biden has suffered from different brain complications throughout his life. In 1988, he suffered from two brain aneurysms, one on each side of his brain, and both of them required surgery with a high risk of damaging long-term functionality. He was given life-saving surgery in February of 1988 after an aneurysm had begun to leak. And then while recuperating from that, he suffered a major complication called a pulmonary embolism. And then in May of 1988, he had another operation for an aneurysm uh, that was at risk of bursting, but thankfully did not. And Biden has said that he was told that he had less than a 50% chance of recovery. Perhaps that's what we're seeing. And my intention is not to scrutinize him for health complications over which he had no control. But unfortunately, these are things that we have to consider when a man is seeking the highest office in the country, one of the most powerful positions in the world. Now, we do have to point out that the man who performed these surgeries on Joe Biden has come out during this election cycle to state that Joe Biden is just as good now as he was back then and that he's totally fit to run for president. And I'm sorry, Doc, but you're just incorrect on that one. First of all, to say that Joe Biden is just as good now as he was back then is actually an insult to the Joe Biden of days past, who at least wasn't as much of a liability. But also, no one in their right mind could be watching this man operate and not call into question his functionality. And I didn't even take this into account when I was making my election predictions over a year ago. Like, of course, I knew that he was old and that he was going to be the oldest in history, but I seriously did not expect for it to become so obviously unsustainable so quickly. This has really made things more interesting along with the whole global pandemic and whatnot. But Seriously, if you look at the long-term effects of brain complications that are similar, but not exactly the same as the ones from which Joe Biden has suffered, the likelihood of dementia is much higher than the general population. That's in addition to the fact that in the general population, the risk of developing dementia doubles every five years after age 65, which is an exponentially increasing likelihood. That's in addition to the fact that one in six people over the age of 80 have dementia. For context, Joe Biden is 77 years old. This, by the way, is higher than the average life expectancy for a man in America by the time he is sworn in, assuming that that happens, he will be 78. For context, the oldest president ever sworn in was Donald Trump, who was 70 at the time. There's a big difference between 70 and 78, especially when you're showing the signs of aging that Joe Biden is very clearly showing. I mean, let's talk about that. Let's talk about some of the warning signs of dementia, shall we? First one, memory loss. People with dementia might forget things or they might not be able to recall certain details, things like that. Okay. Next one, difficulty with tasks. They may experience difficulty doing things that they used to be able to do. Okay. Next one, disorientation. They might become confused 
confuse. They might forget where they are. They might think that they're in a different time of their lives. Okay, next one, language problems. They might have trouble with words and this can lead to their sentences being pretty incoherent. Okay, interesting. Changes in abstract thinking. They might have trouble with numbers and uh, knowing what numbers mean. Okay, very interesting. Next one, poor judgment. They might have trouble knowing how to act in certain situations. Again, very interesting. What about mood or personality changes? The person might have rapid mood swings or they might even become confused or withdrawn. Also, loss of initiative. The person might stop doing things that they used to do, causing people around them to have to prompt them back into them. Again, very interesting. I, of course, am drawing no conclusions for I am not a doctor. I am but a simple YouTube man. However, while I might not have the authority to diagnose someone with dementia, I can tell you that I don't have to spend seven years in medical school to know that something's not right when I see it. And I can draw comparisons between the symptoms. I can think of relatives that I know that have suffered from it. And I can infer and extrapolate from there to promise you this. We can even ignore right now, but four years from now, I guarantee you that Joe Biden will not be able to do that job. Even if we choose to consciously ignore everything like the media seems to want to do for whatever reason, it can only get worse from here. Historically, logically, biologically, empirically, whichever metric you'd like, it's only going to get worse for Joe Biden from here. And that is something that we have to seriously consider. The question of, can you be president in that condition? Can you have the toughest, most stressful, most demanding job in the world? No breaks for four years. Can you do that in that condition? I would expect the answer to be a resounding no, and I think even the Democrats agree, which we'll explore in a second, but I want to bring back something from 2016. Really quick, I remember back in 2016 when there were serious questions into the state of Hillary Clinton's health. There was the footage of her getting into the van with assistance. She was always coughing. There was legitimate concern, but even through all of that, she never appeared to be dimmer. She never really lost her train of thought. Her cognitive performance never really seemed to decline. We can't say that now for Joe Biden in 2020. Joe Biden in 2020 is considerably worse in mental condition than Hillary Clinton in 2016. And we have every reason to believe that it's only going to continue to get worse from here. And the Democrats know this. Like recently, they've been openly discussing the possibility of completely replacing Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders with someone like Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York who they think has done a fantastic job amidst the coronavirus outbreak. And I mean, Biden himself even told an audience in Georgia that his VP pick would have to be ready to step in as president on day one if something were to happen to him. Now, this could simply be an acknowledgement of his age, or it could be an acknowledgement of what the public has long been skeptical of throughout this race, which is the condition of Joe Biden himself. Like perhaps he and his campaign know that at this point, the name of the game is reducing Joe Biden as a liability while using his name and momentum to get someone else into office by, by having them be his VP. And then, you know, assuming the role if and when he steps down, like who knows? But one conclusion that I think we can draw definitely from this is the fact that the Democrats would put Joe Biden through this. The fact that they would allow and even encourage him to do this, despite what is so obvious to all of us, just shows that their hatred for Donald Trump has completely clouded their judgment and their remaining morals. This just shows how desperate they are and just how much they hate Trump, that they would put Joe Biden through this, who probably is the best candidate, frankly. I mean, they're all terrible, but Biden's got name recognition, he's leading in the polls, whatever. But still, it's very unfortunate. But at the same time, we're here to make America great again. So if that means ending Joe Biden's career, that's fine by me. You know, we got uh, many of his best gaffes on tape, whether it's him saying questionable things about race, making questionable comments to women, many of whom are underage. It's all going to make for some great Donald Trump campaign ads. So I'm very excited for that, frankly. Question. <laughs> what law school did you attend and where did you place in that class? And the other question oh, is, yes. could you quickly, I, I think we I, I think I probably have a much higher IQ than you do, I suspect. That's the right response. If anyone ever criticizes you for anything, just state the fact that your IQ is higher than theirs. That's what I do. I've been doing it since 1999, baby. Tell you that much. But anyways, uh, what do you got to do? Four things. Four things. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below. Turn on notifications. Maybe we'll add a fifth thing. We're gonna do like a like a, a build up. We're gonna do like pyramid set. The fifth thing eventually will be share the video with your friends. But right now you can do four and that is okay. You will be forgiven. But thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. That was bad. There we go.